It is time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I'm pretty excited. We're going to be playing Origins How We Became Human for the medical, uh, the medical thing, uh, part of careers, medical college. These people have been in medical school for a while. Uh, well, it's been a while since they've entered medical school uh, in our timeline. But in their timeline, they're interns like around five or so like around there. They've been waiting for a fifth person, and so have I, because I, I like to play Origins with a full complement. But I also really like to play Origins, how we became human. And I'm the best Origins player in the world, so you're in for a real treat. I'm going to teach you all the great best strategies for Origins, how we became human, while we... While we um, explore these real people exploring the game. So um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, they picked their demographies, or I kind of picked for them based on their personality. Um, for example, Flips, she's most proud of her husband, so she took the matrimonial uh, people here. Um, what was this guy? Who was a Chinky, right? You drink to be merry, so... so. I forget exactly why. It has to do with the, the words that are on the back side, and I don't want to turn that over right now. Um, but I, I guess I just could keep saying that I'm excited to play this, but I think rather than do that, I should just start playing Origins, How We Became Human, Real People multi Automatic Tournament, Medical Degree part portion of the English slash Pasha dash Rue leg careers. I'm not going to do a strict how-to on this. Uh, Remember, this is supposed to be fun. Uh, I have done a how-to on this game, which is probably wrong in some respects. Um, and maybe how I'm going to play the game is going to be wrong. But I'm going to try not to really consult the rules too much during playing because I play this game enough. It's been a while that I feel like I shouldn't need to do that. And I can just kind of have some fun. So, um, but I'll just kind of say what's happening as it's happening. All right now, we have these brains that are covered up with these these cubes here, and we need to develop them by taking the cubes off um, in order to advance in history. Right? So Hair Bear here, he's got two symbols showing. He's got his limbic system, which is his hand showing, and his hindbrain, which has his acorn showing. Now if we look over here, this is very handy. This is the revised thing that you can print offline. Um, here's the thing that comes with it, but they both have in common so things here. So with hand or acorn, we have this action that we can do, draw a new era card. Now we can't do any of these because we don't have those showing or any of these. So really the only thing Hair Bear can do is draw an era one card. So let's do that right now. And here we have an era one card. Now he can now play this because we would resolve any catastrophes. That didn't happen. He has one action because if we look here on his innovation track, he has one showing. Right. Um, and then he can play cards down to hand size. Now his hand size is currently one, so he can hold on to this or he can play it. Um, when he plays it, he can either do what's on the left hand side or the right hand side. Now in this case, he can't do the left hand side because he has to have this, um, I don't know what that symbol's called, but uh, he needs to have that showing. And it's not showing, so he could play it for the right hand side, which would give him a fecundity decrease, which is nice, because that would drop this down to here, meaning he would have two innovation actions on his next turn. Um, it would also reveal his natural history part of his brain if it wasn't already showing. Now that's showing, so that's not that useful to him. Um, what he's going to need to be thinking about is what's coming up, what the other people can do. Our crow magnet here, they can, uh, he can do, Dick can do either novel behavior or imitate. So he's wondering, is, is Dick going to want to take that? Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't really matter too much to him. Um, but I think Hair Bear is just going to go ahead and do it. I don't think he's the type who would really want to hold that. So we're going to do a fecundity decrease. Fecundity decreases are huge in the game because you really want to clear out this innovation track. Um, scores based on how, numbers on the innovation track, how much that you have, and then also each um, demography here has special cards that you can bid on that will also be worth points. Uh, you want to be careful not to do another fecundity decrease though because that would totally cover up his population track so we have and that would keep him from doing population actions. So there's innovation actions and population actions. Generally the innovation actions are more generally useful because they involve getting cards a lot but population actions can be great too especially if you use the kind of uh, revised Sabine raid rules um, which can be super useful later on. 
So I haven't quite done Dick's turn, but I was thinking about Dick, and that made me think about the map, because Dick has a interesting position. I'm used to, I'm really used to the five-player game of this. Um, I don't know if I've ever played with less than five or not, but um, one particular trait of not having, so it, with a, if we had all the players, someone be, would be here too, as well as starting in these other spots. These are migrate, great migrants right now, or migrators, or nomads, who are, you know, hunting around the hexes where they are. So, Dick up here, Neanderthal, he's hunting here and here, and here. You know, so he's well hunting and foraging and whatnot. Um, but normally, have someone here. So since that's not there, that really helps Dick out. Because Dick's going to have access to all this area uncontested. And I wonder if I were to look at the rules, if maybe it would say if you're playing four, which demography to take out. But I didn't check that. I just kind of went with what I thought they should be. And so we're just going to go with that and move on. I should also note that that's not Dick. That's Flips. I don't know why I, I, I thought that. I, I think because I played a game online and they've flipped the colors. I play it so that demography C uses white and demography N uses black. When I played online, they did it the other way. Um, so I think I got kind of used to that. This, maybe that was the last time I played the game. I think that game's still going on, actually, but no one's done anything in months. So a lot of people would probably take this adoption card. Dick's not gonna do it, partially because I don't think Dick is into adoption so much. I think um, if he's gonna have kids, he wants the pleasure of having the kids. Um, so he's gonna get this. Now here we have a public card. This is gonna mean that Yellowstone blows up in the next phase. Doesn't really matter, because that's gonna be over here. There's no one there to be affected by that eruption. Um, and then he can put this up for bid. Now, no one can bid on this right now, so he's probably gonna keep this in his hand. You bid on elders, no one has any elders. Elders are up here, and to bid, you put them down here, and then you wanna, there are ways to reset them back up to this bubble, so that's what this is all about. So he's just gonna hold this in his hand. Probably, in hindsight, it would've been wiser to take the adoption, but, you know, tally sticks ain't bad. That's gonna bring us to Chinky. Chinky's down here, here's our Hobbit. Now, one thing the Hobbit's gotta deal with is they probably wanna to try to get out of this part of the air, the, the country, uh, or the world, sorry, before um, this parkland climate flips to jungle. Now, the parkland climate might never flip, but it's fairly likely that it will. There's a one in three chance every time that a, some sort of climate change happens, um, and if it, you know, if it happens before they get out, and I've seen this many times, they're kind of just stuck here for a big chunk of the game. So he's going to be thinking about that right now. Um, the fecundity decrease is less interesting to him because he's already got the two innovation actions. He starts with that. Uh, but it does also open up his Broca's area, which is nice. So if you can do both, when you open up the Broca's area, that's going to go down here, right? Fills up the innovation, then he can fecundity decrease it down. That's also going to give him some... Um, some population that he can he can expand and am I supposed to go f this is one thing I think I've done this before I'm supposed to go through everyone's full turn before <laughs> right so what I did is I did I was going I did this once with other people where I, I did um, and I think an earlier form of the game was actually like this where everyone does phase one then everyone does phase two then everyone does phase three and then everyone does phase four and I think I just did phase one through three for Hair, Dare, Hair Bear, and I didn't do his population action. So I'm going to go back and do that before we go further on with Chinky. So Hair Bear, where is he? Right here. He's going to do a population increase, I think, and try to compete for Asia. One, two. So it starts off here. One, two. He can't go that way. He can go this way. Three. That's Savannah right now. Four, five, and he'll be right there. He's on the R cow space, which is a nice one. Um, Dick, for his part, now if he does a population increase, he's going to have to worry about stability next time. But he's looking at this this fecundity decrease card and thinking maybe he can grab that. And he's got kind of a similar thing where he doesn't want to get stuck in southern Africa, so he's going to go ahead and move out um, here. Go one, two, three. Hmm. He'd have to bonk him or else get permission to pass. I don't I don't think he's gonna count on that. So I think he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, be over there. And then that'll bring us back to Chinky. Chinky's gonna go ahead and take this card, play it, fill that in, fecundity decrease, 
down there. Um, and then for population, he's going to try to get out. And we are in an ice age, so he can cross here. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's nice there's no Peking man, because otherwise he could, he would have to, he'd probably starve out um, right there, which would not be good. Now we'll go to flips. And flips. She also likes this card. So adoption, see how, how quickly things can spread here? She's going to take the adoption. Oh, and yeah, he could imitate that. And go ahead and do it. Kind of the same thing there. Clears that off. She might want to keep her neocortex actually full. Oh, no, I think you have to do the encephalization. Um, and then she will also... I think she'll send it... Uh, that way, instead of messing over there. Yeah, I think that's how Flips is going to do it. Okay, I'll probably play the next turn off camera or maybe just come in if something notable happens. But Okay, something notable happened. And this is going to happen when you're starting a game and kind of introducing concepts as they come up. Uh, Hair Bear drew this card. Now, he's not going to play the card, I don't think. Uh, what's special about this card? Well, it allows him to uh, boost his metallurgy. Metallurgy is on one of these infrastructure tracks here. Um, based on where you are, different things happen, but a, a key thing in metallurgy, and an important thing about who has the metallurgy advantage in this game is um, if you fight, which means you put their cube on your cube on their cube, or they fight you, uh, basically, whoever has the higher metallurgy is going to win. There's a few other like modifiers that are in special cases, but that's generally what's going to happen. If no one has a metallurgy advantage, then you just both die. So he wants to wait to, to put that down, because if he puts it down now, he's going to get the metallurgy advantage for a, you know just for the rest of his turn, and then probably everyone else is going to take that card and everyone's going to go up. If he waits till next turn, he draws a new card, he can play them both and cover it up and then no one else can take it. And I think Hair Bear would like that. He would like to be the big man with the big spear. And it's Dick's turn. I'll just keep talking. Dick, now, if Dick draws a card, he's taking a, he's taking a risk. And the reason why is because he could go into chaos here, which means he would lose one of his cubes and it would go onto his innovation track, which would not be very good. Um, to start the game, just kind of, you don't want your innovation stuffed up. It's kind of like having stuffed sinuses. It makes just everything more difficult for you. Um, you'll always get at least one action, but if you get too stuffed up, it just gets really hard to dig yourself out. You like to blow your nose constantly, and then it starts to get sore, and um, you could have nosebleeds, and that wouldn't be good. But Dick is kind of a, he likes to live dangerously. He's a PI. He likes Cool Whip and Ice Cubes. He was stabbed, you know, this guy, he says seize the day, right? You don't seize the day with adoption. You seize the day by having your kids get adopted. So he's going to draw another card, and that's awful for Dick. Uh, well, not awful. Um, he has another, another card to auction. One of these he's going to have to throw away. I think he's going to throw away the Tribal Shaman card because um, he doesn't score on it. And that's going to... I think leave the game. Does it leave the game? I think it leaves the game. And we are going to have a climate change. So where is our die? Do we have a die? Yeah. Five. There's the parkland. So that's going to turn to jungle. So that means all these green spaces are going to be really hard to get through. Um, and it's really nice that that both Chinky and um, and Dick got out of their their areas now. Fortunately for them, if either of these cubes gets bonked, then they are going to be stuck. And I think I actually forgot to do Hair Bear's population actions again. Speaking of that, and what's he going to do? He went up there. Uh, now, Dick has got to roll to see if he goes into chaos right now. Basically, it's only if he rolls a 1, and that's cocked. We won't count that um, because it's got to be less than 2 there. One, so that's really bad. He's got to decide whether he loses this guy here, which there are some nice elements of being down there, or this guy up here. Problem with being up here is if it changes into desert, then he's gonna lose that guy too. Oh, that's tough, but he does like to live dangerously. Kinda hasn't done well for him so far, but I think he's going to go ahead and... So Southern Africa is just totally out of bounds now for Dick. Um, 
Now he's going to make a population action. He's going to just go ahead and move one over onto the open space. And he's kind of not in a very good position to start the game. Chinky just drew body paint shell necklaces so that we're going to have to roll for yet another climate change. We're getting these right off the bat. That's going to turn, turn the the um, savanna into desert. Good thing Dick moved his guy out there or he would have been enslaved to someone right off right uh, this early in the game. We're still on turn two. Um, so things are happening pretty fast. That's good. So that's essentially going to do for the yellow spaces what the the jungle parkland to jungle climate did for the green spaces. Um, all of those can be mitigated by different infrastructure advances. Um, Let's see, I think you have to get uh, here on your footprint to be able to move through the yellow. And here, um, it's kind of swapped. So the green infrastructure thing will help you with yellow, and the yellow infrastructure advance will help you with green. Hair Bear's turn, rather than drawing a card, because he wants to be sure he can get something to cover up that metallurgy, he doesn't want to wait on that. He took the one card, we've innovation card we've had played, uh, which is adoption. So first he's going to play this... Um, hafted thrusting spear that's going to move him up here to the copper age and then he's going to cover that up with um, with the adoption again the fitted clothes which allow you to adopt um, that's just going to give him a fecundity decrease not that exciting this side he probably would have liked to do but he was not able to um, and now he's going to start to be kind of mean and how he's going to do that is he's going to pop out a guy Oh no, this is covered up. He can't get through here because that's ice. He can't get through here because that's desert ice. Yeah, he was going to bonk this guy to get him out. So instead he's going to bonk someone else. He wants to cause some problems. I think he's going to go bonk her. Yep, there you go. Hair bearer. He's not going to just be passive in this game. Let's see what Dick draws. Or maybe Dick wants this card now. No, he's he's done this before. And if he drew that, he would just be opening up. Oh my gosh! Dick is the king of drawing these things. Okay, another climate change. Six. So now the ice age is over. Um, does anyone fall into the water? No, but she's st stuck on this island here, England. And da, 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 no one is. But this is all down now. The barrier's down. So Chinky's got to watch out. Luckily, Chinky, he gets two innovation actions. So he can probably, he can dig those out and get the metallurgy. Uh, Hair Bear was really hoping to get him right off the bat. And once again, this card's going to leave the game. Personal names. So uh, these cubes are not going to have personal names for the duration. Um, Dick, beyond that. Oh, now he has to roll for chaos. No chaos. Uh, not that much would have happened. He just would have lost a turn. And he's kind of trapped there now. Instead of being trapped down there, he's trapped over there. All right, he's going to stay. Chinky's going to take both of these, and he's going to do kind of essentially what, what Dick just did. Except it's going to give him encephalization there, along with moving over. And put this on top now. He could actually do the top part there, and he wants to do that because he's got a nice card he can bid on. And that's going to move this up here and then encephalize one of his language areas. So unfortunately, he's only going to have one action next turn, but he can also play this. He's the only one who can bid on it, so he's going to get a cultural advantage over everyone else, which is nice because you can take their elders if you have um, cities or what, or things like that. So great. And this is uh, this elder is a tailor. Flips grabbed the cover-up card, not because she can get the metallurgy, because she's stuck, but she wanted a card to cover up her own special uh, advances she's going to get, and she also thought this would be nice to have. So she's going to go ahead and play this. That's going to give her a metallurgy advancement, which is important to her, because she's, otherwise she's going to be trapped in England for who knows how long. Um, and then also she's going to play this one, give herself an elder, and encephalize her language area, her Broca's area. Um, it's better to do Broca's before Wernix, because Wernix you can do as an action if you want later on. Um, she could probably actually do that on her next turn if she wanted to, get into Era 2 before everyone else. So it's not always a good idea, especially if you don't have any uh, cities yet, Metropoli. 
because you have a special action you can do back when your um, your brain is still developing uh, called domestication, which you can't do later on. Hair Bear just took the hafted uh, thrusting spear from Jinky's discard pile, drew a card. It was a uh, Burin Bone Points. Played both for double fecundity um, decrease. That's pretty awesome for him. His innovation track is now at three, and then he knocked Chinky back into um, Indonesia down here. So he's going to be trapped down there until this uh, parkland resolves or until he gets enough um, uh, infrastructure advancements to move out. But that's really going to cut back on his abilities. And he is looking, he's got a pretty good demography here. That three. Um, he could have bumped up his boats, but he wasn't interested in doing that. He got the fecundity decrease instead. Didn't want to have to worry about chaos, especially since he's spread clear across Asia and has a good chunk of... After Dick played Teepee to encephalize his broker's area, Chinky, he is going to take this from Hair Bear to uncover the metallurgy. His thought is if he can get flips to get that card, even though he can't get it himself, um, not that he needs it himself, maybe she can take it out on him since he's kind of trapped down here. So he has this bravado, barren bone points. He would actually really like to use it for the maritime increase. Can he? Yeah, he definitely can. So that's really useful for the hobbits because they have all these little canals down here. Um, can't access them right now. They're not canals. They're like little water passes, I guess. Flips did get the metallurgy, moved a person up here. Now this is all passable now because it's the ice age is, it's a, we're in a tropical age. Bonked away the um, the uh, hair bear person here. Did a little suicide maneuver. That's actually going to affect hair bear worse than her because it, it gets rid of his uh, third innovation action. She's still down to one. Not a good, very beautiful demography but it hinders him more than her in terms of the numbers. Dick was able to get the informational card. He took the um, fitted clothes, got himself a tailor, expended it. Now he automatically won this uh, bid because the only other person who could bid was Flips. Flips is N. He's C. C is further up there, higher up than N, so he would win the tie. That's what that means. C is higher up than N. C, more than N. And with the play of fitted clothes, the second play of fitted clothes, Chinky is going to be our first person to go into era two here. He's in metaphoric language. Um, sometimes you don't really want to go into era two so quickly. You want to be able to get some metropoli first, but he's not going to really be able to. Uh, this is water. This is jungle. I guess he could get banana and sugar cane. He maybe should have tried to do that but he would like to just get some jump on things. He feels very stuck there. And he got to refresh his elder, so that's nice. Um, he's gonna be drawing air two cards on his next turn, and maybe he can find something to bump him up enough to be able to go, at least go down and settle Australia, uh, get his, get some boats. Flips is going to attempt to de domesticate the Wizened here. Uh, so she's gotta roll 1d6 plus one and get uh, higher than three. She rolls a three or higher, it's good. Five, so she did it. So she's gonna have her first metropolis of the game, which is really nice. Um, that's gonna give her the ability to have more elders, which is wonderful, and um, has a little bit of defensive ability. So what else does she get? She had a four, so her footprint gets to go up. That's gonna be really useful to her right now. With a higher footprint, she can go across the deserts, so though it takes more, uh, more movement points essentially <clears throat> and also um, she can move close to other people and they will starve out if they have less of a footprint than her so she can have two cubes in an area and be okay whereas other people can't so if, if you have a military disadvantage or military parity with someone else that's another way you can deal with them um, and then also her energy goes up one which is really useful a lot of things with energy requirements, and energy is a big part of the game, um, especially later on. Like getting to energy two is a big bottleneck of the game, and then things just kind of explode after that. So Flips did just move in next to Hair Bear. Now he can um, bonk her if he wants and just kill both of them. Otherwise, he has to move himself out. She kind of put him in a position where he had to 
uh, try to do a suicide move, but he's going to try to do something else instead. He's going to try to uh, domesticate the Arak cow. That's that's a pretty coveted spot early on in the game. We haven't seen much of a tussle over at this game. I think partially because we didn't have Peking Man and we had people get locked in pretty quickly. So three gets to add two. That's five. So he's going to be up there too. So he's not going to have to worry about starving. And he's looking pretty good. And now we get to see a different kind of domestication. We're going to see Dick trying to domesticate sorghum rice. So he needs to get a one or a two, which is not very likely. Nope. If he was able to do the oil palm African yam, that would have worked for him. Uh, but at least he got to do this thing too. Oh yeah, that's how he did the domestication was with that. So he's going to get to reset that anyway. So kind of a waste. And that's another domesticating time. Chinky is going to domesticate the banana sugar cane there. He gets a minus two to the roll. That's pretty nice early on because you want to get roll low early. There we go. So he's going to go footprint up one. He's going to get his first city. That's going to let him expand more. He needs to be able to expand things out of his population track so that he can get have a, have space to move his, his innovation track to. Um, he domesticated with this card because he couldn't do it as an action. Which let also let, gives him an elder, so that's pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Care Bear grabbed a series of cards from other people's discard piles. He's gonna try to do some more, um, some more uh, domesticating. Oh, I forgot to put the town there. Um, let's see. He wants to get roll high now. So what he's trying to do is to get the five and six range because that's gonna bust his footprint up to three. Um, and so he's gonna domesticate some plants. And we'll do the domestication first. You can do these in either order, these icons. Actually, he probably wants to do that one last, because if you have the eyeball up, then he would be able to take cards out of Chinky's discard pile that are twos or bid on two things. First, he has to deplete that, uh, expend that elder, and then he's going to roll. And we'll go for rice millet. So that looks good. Yeah. Rice millet there. And three, that's going to be plus one. That gets him four. That's not enough. So he failed in that one. Um, but he can use the elder gain on that to bring the guy back up. And then he's going to play... I think he'll do this one next. No, he'll do this one next. And to pretty much do the same thing again. So he's just going to do another roll on it. Four, that's one plus one. That's five. That's going to bring him up to three here. Footprint three. He's definitely the dominant civilization here. And that's great for him. Here's an example of a rule that you won't find in the rule book of Origins, How He Became Human, but uh, it's, well, it's not very specific, uh, specific about this, but we had some communication with uh, Phil Eklund, who created this game, and he says that this would work. Um, if you are outside someone else's city, you're besieging them, regardless of whether you do anything or not. So if you're doing that as an action, you can Sabine Raid, which means you can take stuff out of their discard pile. It makes um, makes the population actions a lot better, I think, to be able to do that. So that's why he's just kind of camping out there and just kind of stealing from her culture as like a little cultural leech there. Dick feels like he has to keep trying to domesticate the sorghum African rice because he's kind of holed up in there and then that would give him a chance of getting out, though not really. But if the if the jung, jungle ever goes away, it would give him a chance. So he's going to roll again. One or two. One. He actually does it. So we have Dick Town right there and Sorghum African Rice. And that's great for you, Dick. I feel really good that that happened. Let's see if he goes into chaos. He does. So since he only has one cube on the board, he doesn't lose anything. But his turn does end. He can't pop out another cube right there, which is maybe what he would have done. I don't know. Bittersweet card here for Jinky. Pretty good. It's worth two things, um, two points, and also gives him a two administration rating. That lets him uh, add two to his chaos roll, so he can have a lot more guys out than um, than he can sustain normally, which is kind of nice, but he does lose an elder as a result of getting it. He got it because he's the only one who can bid on it. Um, she has an elder that she could bid on, but she's not in era 2, so she can't bid on the era 2 card. So that's pretty great for him. That's three points Chinky has on the board. So although Hair Bear is doing the best in terms of map presence and infrastructure and um, this 
uh, the demography tracks and whatnot. Chinky actually has kind of the most scoring potential. These are these are really can't, it's hard to get those away from someone once they're there. Flips is looking for an advantage, so she drew a card. Um, didn't get what she wanted, but she did get something that lets her uh, encephalize her final language area. Also, uh, reset an elder. Um, Encep that final encephalization let her flip over to era two. Nice thing about um, her demography, she's the Neanderthal, is that she can uh, pretty much immediately go into to the Golden Age, which then if she goes into Chaos again, she can get to Era 3. You kind of get through Era 2 quickly if you can. So if she can do that, then that will give her an advantage. Let's see if she goes into Chaos while we're here. No, she does not. 